still a very good benefit, but one that's not nearly so expensive. And so we're setting that up in the ballot measure, and, and employees will have a choice. We're also setting a new, we call it a new tier for new employees, that will be a less, much less costly plan for the city, and employees will pay half of that. And even though it's much less costly, it'll still be uh, a good plan, probably twice as good as Social Security or better, uh, but one that we can afford and one that we'll share 50-50 with the employees in terms of how we pay for it. And that would include both the normal cost and the unfunded liability cost. The ballot measure will also uh, change the definition of uh, disability retirement to deal with some problems we've had with disability retirements. Uh, right now, two-thirds of our firefighters retire uh, disabled. Uh, many of them work till the last day, and then they come back and get disability retirement. So the system is being uh, abused. So we're going to change that definition a little bit. Uh, we'll still have disability retirement, but we're, we're fixing the definition. Uh, we also will require that future changes in retirement benefits would have to come back to the voter for approval. Uh, that's the way it's done in San Francisco and some other places, so that the voters would ultimately have the decision. Because when you look back at the history of how we got into this trouble, you can see a history of 10 or 15 changes that were made along the way to improve the benefits without paying for them, as a general rule. And that's a recipe for the trouble that we're in, a recipe for a bigger disaster. So. If we want to improve the benefits in the future, we're going to have to ask the voters. And I'll give you an example of that. In 1984, the city council decided, and this is before I was there, so my, my conscience is clean. I was a planning commissioner at the time, had nothing to do with this. But in 1984, the council decided that retirees should have medical coverage. And so the council decided that everybody who was already retired would get medical coverage. And everybody who retired in the future would get medical coverage. Well, who paid for that? Nobody. It was just a, a benefit that was granted. Well, somebody who's already retired, they're going to start drawing immediately. But no money was ever set aside for that. So not until a couple of years ago did we begin to set aside money for those promises. And so today, the unfunded liability that I was talking about, $1.9 billion of that, is for the unfunded liability for health care. In 1984, the, the benefit was granted. We should have put money aside at the time for the people who had already retired. We didn't. And we haven't put money aside all along the way. So if in the future a council wants to enhance the benefits, they at least ought to ask the voters. Uh, so that's a, another provision that's in the ballot measure. Uh, you can see this online. It's all posted. There's a lot of uh, information online readily available if anybody wants to look at the details. Give us that website again here. Uh, SanJoseCA.gov. Uh, look at the mayor's page, and uh, we've got uh, a lot of information on this, as well as the text of the ballot measure and, and, and things like that, for if you want to look for yourself. Let me go back to where I started with an apology, an intergenerational apology. In Greece, they lived on borrowed money. They lived very well but they don't have the money to pay the bills when the bills have come due. Uh, we, my generation, has lived on borrowed money. Uh, we've run up the credit cards, and now we're going to pass that credit card on to you, and you get to pay off the debt. That's not fair. It's wrong. But that's what happens uh, when you live on borrowed money. And that's just a fact that we're, we're facing as we move forward. And if you, you look at the the history of living on borrowed money, it takes a while to work out from under uh, the problems. I, I guess I can say I'm, I'm glad you're not the graduating class of 2008, because they graduated in the face of a, a recession, the Great Recession, which was the worst recession since the uh, Depression of the, of the 30s. So at least now we have some hope of a growing economy. Uh, San Jose has 25,000 more jobs this year than we had last year this time. Uh, we're adding jobs, uh, albeit slowly. Uh, at least we're moving up, and up is so much better than down. We've had years of down. So that doesn't make it any easier uh, looking for a job, but at least gives you a better opportunity for that. And there are jobs today, jobs that are going begging here in the Valley because the 
the people that are looking for jobs don't match the, the skills and the challenge required for the job. And so, you know, one message for all of you is to try to figure out where the jobs are going to be and what you can do and what skills you need to be able to do so that you've got a, a marketable skill and that gives you a, a leg up when you're looking for a job. Uh, to answer the question about San Jose's budget, we have a, a $10 million surplus projected for the next fiscal year starting July 1st. The reason we have a $10 million surplus, it's a, it's a cushion, it's a 1% cushion in our general fund, 1% cushion, is because we reduced our payroll by 24% this year. There's no doubt that you can generate a surplus by firing people and cutting their pay. It's been done in industry after industry, and we've had to do that in San Jose. I just don't want to do it again. Uh, so my objective is to control the costs rather than having to uh, do this again. So our 1% cushion going into the fiscal year starting July 1st is for that fiscal year. The following year, our retirement costs are going to go up by about $40 million on top of what we're already paying. And we're looking at at least a $20 million gap shortfall the next year. So what I propose as a budgeting principle for this year is that we treat the money that we have in one-time funds that are in reserve and this $10 million surplus as a bridge to get us across two years. So we don't spend all the money this year. We save as much as we can for the next year when we've got the big gap so we can have two years without having to cut services, lay people off. And in that two years, we'll implement the fiscal reforms, including the pension reform ballot measure, that will generate savings that will allow us to begin to restore services and by restoring services, we'll be hiring people because it's people who deliver services. We'll be able to restore those services over the course of this, this three years. What I have proposed is that we have four libraries that are sitting empty, brand new libraries that have never been opened, and that we cautiously begin to open those libraries. So we will be hiring some people uh, to take those jobs as we begin to do that over the course of the year. If our projections prove correct, then we do have... Uh, a 1% one, 1 cushion that we can open those over the course of the year and then work to hang on to them so that we don't have to turn around and close them in, in two or three years. So that's a strategy. Last year this time we were looking at a $115 million budget gap that we had to close. And we closed it by cutting everybody's pay by 10%, including mine. Everybody in the city took a 10% cut and we shrank our workforce by 400 people. Wow. That is not fun, and we don't want to do it again, and so we have to get control over the cost to, to avoid that. And just to point you to a couple more slides here that, that deal with that, is there's the slide that shows the skyrocketing retirement costs, and then the most interesting slide is how this happens operationally. And there's this middle slide about our police department budget, Public safety is our core service. Police departments are our most important department. So over the last decade, we have increased the budget for the police department because it's most important. Other departments have actually seen their budgets go down. Now, this is in dollars. But as we were increasing the budget in dollars by $96 million, we were losing staffing because the costs were going up much faster than the money. And it's fairly simple math. Even though you're increasing the budget, if the costs are going up faster than you increase the budget, you're going to have less people. So we have less police officers today in the city of San Jose than we had 10 years ago, even though we increased the budget by $96 million. That's because the costs were going up so much. So as you can do the projections in your mind, if you run at that rate where the costs are going up faster than revenues, uh, eventually you'll run out of people because you'll have to lay everybody off in order to pay that last person a really a lot of money. Uh, we're not going to do that. We're not going there. But you can't let the costs run faster, faster than your revenues uh, for a very long period of time. And if, what you see happen is 
2,000 less people working for the city of San Jose than we had 10 years ago.